In this example, we are interested in the transfer function between the output I1 and the input R2 of this block diagram. We notice here that there are two inputs and two outputs, which means that both inputs are affecting the output of the system. But because the system is linear, we can calculate the influence of R1 on Y1 and R2 on Y2 separately, and then add them up using the principle of superposition. If you're interested in the relation between I1 and R2, we can simply set R1 to 0, find the relation now between I1 and R2. By setting R1 to 0, all branches that are connected to R1 become 0. For instance, at this point we also have 0, at this point we have 0, which means that a G1 and G7 now can be neglected, and we are left with all other blocks that are now form the path between R2 and Y1. Our job now is to find that a transfer function. By highlighting again the part of the diagram that we are interested, we can now start to simplify this block diagram starting at R2. So let's write our input R2 here. R2 is fed to G4, and now the output of G4 is connected to that sum between G5, that a feedback loop, I should say, between G5 and H2. This is a simple feedback loop. It can be simplified as G5 over 1 plus G5 H2. Now let's follow the path that go up to G8. We have the output of this block connected to G8. G8 goes to the sum with a negative sign. You see now that everything that comes from R1 is zero. So that sum cannot be neglected simply because there is a negative sign. So the, the signal that comes out of G8 is multiplied by negative one, again, because of that negative sign in the sum, and that goes to G2. The output of G2 now goes to that sum with three inputs. We can split that into two sums each having two inputs. So G2 can feed a sum that is the output of G9 with a positive sign. And we can split that into two sums again. The sum of the feedback loop G3 and H1. And this is the negative feedback loop, hence the negative sign. So this is equivalent, and here we have the output I1. In this process, we still had G9. G9 is connected in the output of G5 and H2, which we converted into this equivalent transfer function. So the output here still has the function G9, and the function G9 then feeds the sum, that a triple, triple input sum that we split into two uh, double input sum. Now things look a lot easier to, to simplify. The first two blocks can be multiplied together. We have R2 that now multiplies G4 and G5. The output here feeds G8, negative 1 and G2. They can simply be multiplied together, so negative G2, G8. And we have that a sum underneath. No, notice that that is not a feedback loop. That's a feed forward loop. If we call the signal here A, here we have A times G8 times G2 times negative 1. And underneath here, from the um, bottom loop, we have A times G8, and then we add them together. We can simply add G9 to this block diagram, and if now our signal is again called A, the output that we have here is negative G8, G2, A plus G9, A, which, which is exactly what we have at that point. Now moving forward, we have the feedback loop between G3 and H1, and that's a simple feedback loop. 
Now we know that the feedback loop simplifies as G3, not the line function, divided by 1 plus, because of the negative sign, G3 H1. And this is Y1 of S. Now our job is very simple. We can simply multiply all these three blocks together to find the final transfer function. So this becomes R2, G3, G4, G5 times negative G2, G8 plus G9, all divided by 1 plus G5, H2 times 1 plus G3, H1. And this is Now the relation between R2 and I1. So Y1 over R2 of S is negative G2, G3, G4, G5, G8 plus G3, G4, G5, G9 divided by 1 plus G3 H1 plus G5 H2 plus G3 G5 G5 H1 H2. And this is the final transfer function.